Now 21 years old, Priti was forced into marriage at the age of 14. Early marriages are common in Nepal, especially in rural areas. 35% of girls in the Dolakha region are married before the age of 18. The 30-year-old man who married Priti was from the same caste as her family, but wealthier. He promised to take care of Priti and her family. The marriage seemed like a gift from the gods. But early on in the marriage, Priti was beaten, tortured, and brutally hung from a rope. Her mother took her and her son, who was then five, back home to escape the violent situation. When the region fell under Maoist control, Priti fled to Kathmandu to avoid being forcibly recruited into the insurgents' ranks. In the capital, she quickly found domestic work and believed her future was becoming brighter. Soon after, she was raped by the son of her employers and found herself trapped. She was dismissed from her job and couldn't return home with the shame of expecting a child from rape. I have two children, a son of six years and another little boy of barely a year, who had to place in an orphanage. I'm very worried about him. I miss my son more than I can say. I think about him every day. But I can't bring him back here to the village. My son can't stay with me. If I bring him back, people will know that he doesn't have a father, that he's a child of rape. We will be rejected by the community. I think about my little boy all the time. When I visited him in the orphanage, I was really worried. It was so hard to see him and to have to leave him there. She was found with the traumatic stress disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder. We call it PTSD psychologically. And she was found so scared and pregnant. This all made her very traumatic in the sense that she couldn't control herself being a, being a live woman and being live mother as well. As she was very, she had very chronic disorder uh, like uh, epilepsy. She couldn't, uh, uh, she couldn't leave her son for even for a minute. Priti is now living back at her parents' home in Dolakha. Her mother urged her to go back to school, where she now studies alongside eight to nine-year-old children attending the third grade. During her last pregnancy, she suffered a uterine prolapse, a common problem throughout Nepal, which went untreated. She cannot be cured because of her epileptic fits. Priti says she wants to stay with her parents and take care of them in their elderly years. She was married when she was a very, uh, very young age. In Nepal, it is a, there is a myth. If your daughter is going married, um, married uh, before menstruation even, it, it, it is said that the parents or the grandmother and grandfather, uh, they, will, they, will, uh, they will go to heaven. Tashi is Divya's eldest son. Like his father, he works as an apprentice goldsmith, but has chosen to live close by his mother. The money he earns allows him to continue his education. Breaking away from the violence he and his mother survived, Tashi strives to be an honorable man. My mother and I suffered a great deal back then. My father was never around for us. He taught me what not to do. 
what I will never do. I will know how to be a good father. I will give all my love to my wife and children. Fek Nepal is also fighting sexual violence through educational initiatives within the community, organizing volunteer health workers, meetings, and peer educators. These young people receive training in reproductive health and raise awareness about the problems of violence against women. They pass on information to educate other young people in schools and organize street theater to stimulate debate. They also channel information back to the NGO, which enables it to screen and provide outreach to other victims of such violence. Finding solutions to problems of gender-based violence is challenging in a culture where women are often married young without the means to earn a living and be independent. The survivors of gender-based violence quietly suffer while these tragedies are often ignored. The stigma attached to sexual violence condemns women to suffer in silence while their communities live in collective denial. This silence can only be broken by greater efforts to draw attention to the reality of violence against women. Victims must be encouraged to step out of the darkness of shame in order to access the support they need to rebuild their lives, while national advocacy continues to push for legislative change to uphold their human rights. NGOs like FECT Nepal provide victims of sexual violence with counseling services, which allows them to talk openly about their experiences, regain their confidence, and end the cycle of violence against women. Doctors, psychologists, and lawyers can all contribute to the specialized services needed so that these survivors may heal, create a life of economic self-reliance, and raise the voices of women to break the silence and live a life of dignity. <laughs>